This is Anthony Priscilla continuing our discussion of inverse functions in my college algebra class. Uh, we had said a function has no repeated x values and a one-to-one -one function has no repeated y values. So no repeated y values in order for it to be a one-to-one -one function. And then we talked about a horizontal line test. And if a horizontal line crosses the uh, graph more than once, then the graph is not one to one, or the function is not one to one. Are quadratic functions one to one? Well, no. We said an inverse is formed by switching the x and y coordinates. The way we connect inverses and one-to-one -one is like this. If a function is one-to-one, -one, then its inverse is a function. That's going to be very significant. If a function is one to one, then its inverse is a function. We looked at problem 10, and we said, okay, this one has no repeated y value, so it is one to one. So switch the x and y's to get the inverse. Notice, there are no repeated x's. This is one to one. Whereas, with problem the number 11 there's repeated y's on the function so its inverse wouldn't be a function so the instructions if it's one to one find its inverse if not write not one to one this one's not one to one 12 it's one to one no repeated y's so there's the inverse function. The notation we're going to be using to denote inverse function is f with a little minus 1 denotes f inverse. Okay. The way we're switching x's and y's brings to mind a very important, or brings up an important statement. The domain of f is equal to the range of f inverse. The range of f is equal to the domain of f inverse. Okay? The x's became a y. The y became an x. Okay? Now, Let's look at the following example. Here's a function f, f of x, 1, 7, 2, 14, 3, 21, 4, 28, 5, 35. There's a function f. It's one to one, there are no repeated y values. Its inverse function interchanges x and y. So instead of one as this x and seven as the y, it'd go like this. Seven, one, 14, two, 21, three, 28, four, 35, 5. I think most of y'all could figure out a way to write a rule for that. f of x, it looks like we're doing what to each of these x values to get the y value? Uh, multiplying by 7, yes, that's right. And over here it's inverse. Well, what are we doing to these numbers to get these over here? Yeah. Okay, someone said it. You're dividing by 7. You take each one of these numbers and divide by 7. And then try to come, so here's two, a function and its inverse. We're going to try to come up with 
a definition, a formal definition for inverse functions. And it has something to do with performing both of these operations, or performing both of these functions at the same time. If you took a number and multiplied it by 7, and then divided by 7, if you did both of these operations, you're going to wind up with whatever number you started off with. The way we say that algebraically is like this. It's a definition. Let's suppose f and g are one-to-one -one functions. Then, f and g are inverses if and only if the way we can, how will we say you can plug a number in here and then plug it, the answer you get over here and get the same thing you started with? It has to do with that function composition. If and only if f of g of x equals x and g of f of x equals x. That's the formal definition for inverse functions. And it's also the, the next problems we're going to do are going to illustrate that. Number five. Number five says, oh, notice the way they're writing, they're not writing the little fog and golf notation. They're not using a little circle for composition. They're just writing it f of g of x with the big parentheses. And that's perfectly fine. We're told to find f of g of x and g of f of x. If we get x on both of these things, then yes, f and g are inverses of each other. If we don't get x on both, then no, they are not inverses of each other. So this is number five. I remember how to work with this f of g and g of x. f of x is 5x minus 8, and g of x is x plus 5 over 8. Ooh, my pen's going dry. Let me see if I can find a better one. So we're trying to find f of g of x and g of f of x. f of g of x and g of f of x. Find f of g of x. That's f of g. g is the x plus 5 over 8. So go to the function f, and in place of that red x, you're going to put x plus 5 over 8. Well, is this going to, is a lot of stuff going to cancel out, subtract down, and we wind up with a x? Ooh, I don't think so. Maybe if we reverse the 8 and 5, a lot of stuff would uh, subtract out and cancel out. Right here, nope. So what are we going to do? Well, I'll go ahead and think of this as, 5 over 1 times x plus 5 over 8. I'm going to distribute the 5. So we would have a 5x plus 25 all over 8. And we have that minus 8 over 1. 
Let's go ahead and think of that 8 over 1. At, get a common denominator. Yes, you can multiply above and below by 8. So we have 5x plus 25 over 8. Minus, is that a 64 over 8? So to subtract two fractions that have a common denominator, you keep that denominator and then 5x. Let's see, 25 minus 54. 25 minus 54, 64 minus 24 is 40, so minus one more one. Is that a minus 39? So in this first box, we would write 5x minus 39 over 8. And we don't know the answer to the second box yet, but we know the answer to C. Are these inverses of each other? No. In order for them to be inverses, we should be getting x for both of these. Well, still got to go through and find this one over here. Let's see, what are we going to get? Okay, that's g of f of x. So go to the function g, and in place of that blue x, we're going to put 5x minus 8. Oh, this one's going to simplify easier, isn't it? What would we have? We would have just uh, 5x minus 3 all over 8. So 5x minus 3 all over 8. And are they inverses? No, they are not. Any questions there? Well, let's try another one of these. Let's do problem number six. Problem six says, okay. Same instructions, find f of g of x and g of f of x and decide if they're inverses of each other. Well, in order for them to be inverses, we should be getting x for both of these answers. So to do the first one, f of x is 3 over x minus 7. g of x is 3 over x, and then a plus 7. We've got to find f of g of x and g of f of x. So, f of g of x. That means you're going to plug g into f. f of g, g is the 3 over x plus 7. And so you go to the function f, and in place of that red x, it's going to look sort of messy. You're going to put all of this blue stuff. The 3 over x plus 7. And let's see how we can simplify this. Well, the 7 minus 7, so those subtract out. So we have a 3 on top over... The blue 3 over x. Now to simplify this complex fraction here, I think probably the easiest thing to do to see how you can cancel is if you multiply it above and below by x, that would cancel the x here. And can we now cancel the 3's? Yeah. What are we left with there? Well, just that green x. Ah, so at this point, well, we can't answer yet, are the inverses. If, one of, if it had turned out not to be x, then we could say, okay, definitely they're not uh, inverses. But one of them's turned out to be x, so we need to show, decide about the other one. g of f of x, is that going to be x? 
Usually if one turns out to be X, the other one will, but not always, but usually. But if you were a gambler, you probably want to bet yes on that. So G of F, G of 3 over X minus 7, so that would be 3 over... In place of this blue X, I'm going to put this red fraction. And how can we simplify that? Well, if we multiply it above and below by X minus 7, then there's no X minus 7 there anymore. Can we cancel the... Yeah, yes, you're right. We can cancel the 3's now. So we have a green x minus 7 right there. You still have this blue plus 7. Where does that come from? Well, that was the blue 7 right here. The x minus 7 plus 7 is x. So x. Are these inverses of each other? Yes. We actually took it, took F and made a little XY table, and took G and made an XY table. You notice that the ordered pairs uh, are being reversed. Okay. This function G undoes the function F. Now. The natural question to ask is, how do you find an inverse function? Well, sometimes, like on number 5, on number 5, these things weren't inverses, but as you go through here, if you look at it real close, if this 5 and 8 had been reversed, the blue 5 and 8, if there had been a 5 here, then the 5s would cancel, if there's been an 8 here, the 8 would subtract out. So sometimes you can look at it and sort of figure out inverses, what an inverse function would be if it's not given. Other times, it's not quite so obvious. So the question is, how do we find an inverse function? How to find f inverse? Well, first of all, you need to make sh well, that's what we'll discuss in a moment, okay?